Okay, in the previous video, I was going over the uh, mounting for the batteries. So that was these threaded rods um, in the front, and there's a couple in the back behind those uh, cables back here. <clears throat> so this has got three quarter inch aluminum tubing. I just bought this stuff at Home Depot and uh, cut and drilled as necessary. And this is stainless so that it doesn't uh, rust because it goes down and underneath. So I got stainless nylock nuts and uh, uh, weatherproof washers, which are, they have rubber on one side and stainless steel on the other. So it helps for a little bit of a compression on that and keeps water or moisture from wicking in. So obviously the batteries are installed. Um, the batteries I purchased off from Amazon, they're about 300 and probably 30 to $50 right now each. And uh, that's a really good value. They're good construction. I've seen other videos out there where the guys tear them apart and give them reviews. Uh, the only bad review I heard on these is they don't have a low temperature sense for shutting down um, at freezing. And we'll talk about that in a minute. You can see the specs right here. Um, at 100 amp hours, all six batteries are in parallel. So that way we have 600 amp hours right here. So let me discuss what this wiring looks like. It looks a little bit unconventional compared to most people. It is in parallel. And um, actually, before I started doing this, I uh, started drawing on one of my boxes and came up with several different methods of wiring this uh, to pull my um, positive off from one end of the bank and the negative off the other end of the bank so the batteries are evenly loaded. And also trying to keep the battery cables the, the length that they should be. Um, that's a cooling fan I'm installing in the electronics uh, side because the inverter and the charge controller gets a little warm. So um, from that, I started drawing more and more and, and then finally, this was the one I chose. I know it doesn't mean much to you just looking at a whole bunch of red and black squiggly lines, but I'll, I'll talk about it real quick here. So what I decided to do, and the reason why I chose this one, was I put all the positives right here in the middle. Uh, I have a cover that I talked about in the last video that's going to come over and cover these batteries up. And uh, to, to, it's a shelf, actually, so I can put some things on top without wasted space. So there's some space between here and up here that I can use for storage of light things. So... Um, the, the way this works here is, um, oh, well, I was saying I wanted all the positives in, in the middle so that they're, they're protected from anything of people loading things on the side or close to the edges of the chassis. So I wanted to get the positives away from any potential negative uh, source. So um, the main feed comes in right here. This feed goes to a disconnect switch in the, in the um, electronics compartment. And I'll go over that in a different video. So this 4 aught cable, all of these cables are 4 aught. This comes up to a T-fuse. This is a 400 amp T-fuse right here. And then it comes down. I've put on loom to protect the cable against abrasions. And I'll be doing that on some of the other ones in the back as well. So it comes in here. And you can see it just snakes all the way around. Back, here, and there. So that's the last battery in the chain. So the positive um, is starts here and ends back there. The negative comes in from the shunt in the electronics compartment through this rubber grommet in the back. And that's a, um, it's kind of like an RV, uh, well, it's a, it's a marine, excuse me, marine sort of rubber boot seal. And I put one in in the other cabinet as well, and it has a, uh, zip tie on the end that you tighten down on the boot so you can weatherize this. You can put sealing in there too. It's kind of up and out of the way. I don't think I'm going to need it, but we'll find out and with time. I may add sealing. So we had said that this is the starting point for the positive, the ending point for the positive. Here's the starting point for the negative. So negative comes off here, like I said, goes to the other compartment. So it goes through its daisy chain here. This is a little bit longer than this cable, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Comes over here and uh, comes back and finishes 
right here. So this is the last battery in the chain for the negative while being the first in the chain for the positive. This is a, on top, you can see a little terminal lug and a wire that comes off the back. That's a temperature sensor from Victron Energy. Um, they use that to make sure you do not charge your batteries at a lower temperature. Earlier I said the Chin's battery does not come with a low temperature sensor. It has a high temp sense. Um, but you do not uh, charge your batteries in uh, below freezing temperature or uh, you'll damage them. That is for lithium batteries. I should clarify that. Uh, this piece here is also a temperature sensor from Victon Energy, connects to the same inverter charger. So I probably only needed one or the other. So I'm not sure if one defaults, uh, which one is actually the default um, temperature sensor. Uh, this one uh, connects to a uh, hardwire temp sensor in the, in the inverter charger. This one is connected via the BE CAN bus um, uh, connection and provides it via data. Now, what's the difference between this temperature sensor and this one? This one is also Bluetooth. So uh, this was the way that I can connect to my, with my phone and uh, be able to do some preliminary sort of settings or turn on and off the inverter charger or change the input amperage off from shore power. So this was important to me to have a Bluetooth connection. I don't have it installed all the way yet on the back is a peel and stick. So this is adhesive. You peel that uh, clear off from there and then you can stick this down. Uh, eventually I'll do that. I'm just not sure where I'm gonna put it yet. So if it's gonna be right on one battery or the other in the back or on this side, this wall is one inch thick air insulated. All the other walls and the floor are one inch thick foam. Um, with aluminum siding. So I'm not sure, uh, I gotta figure out where I think it's gonna be the coldest. Uh, the doors are the same, they're one inch thick uh, with fiberglass siding. So maybe down on one front of one of these batteries. Uh, I'll figure that out in a while. Um, so uh, this is it for the battery install. And then I talked about the shelf. I don't know if I can do the shelf with one hand on the phone and one hand We'll try it. So the shelf comes in here like so, just like that. And then I have a bunch of these pins that I've drilled and got these all centered and marked them from the bottom up. And then I can put the, the pins in, there's five of them. And that'll keep the shelf from moving while I'm driving. I'll probably cover the shelf with the, the same charcoal looking uh, indoor outdoor carpet as well just to match uh, everybody is worried about fire but you know lithium batteries are pretty devastating if they do catch on fire they they, they are if they go into overheat they can be very uh, uh, well it'll just cause a very catastrophic failure so whether I have wood here or carpet down here, or if I have crete board or metal or something like that, you know, the, the, it's just not gonna stop them. When they go into, uh, I don't know what the, the word is for it, but when they catch on fire and burn up, that's not um, a little fire that, that uh, wood or, I mean, concrete board or metal can stop. But it's probably better if you're gonna do this to, to, to take every advantage of fire safety you can. I'm definitely doing uh, protection of the cables as much as I can and the fuse as close as I can to the system. And uh, if each, and like I said earlier, each of the batteries have an overheat uh, on the uh, battery management system. They have an overheat sensor, so they will shut off if they go overheat, but you can still have failures where there's nothing stopping them. So anyways, uh, on the next video, I'll go over some of the electronic side that uh, things I'm changing in there. I'm adding LED lighting on the on the compartment roof so I can see at night, change fuses, and I'm adding a cooling fan with a thermal sensor to that as well. So um, that's it in a nutshell.